This is using HTML5 in down-level browsers. So as you probably know, HTML5 is a pretty recent standard to build websites using HTML5. You can do this today, but a lot of the older browsers that some of your users may have um, don't have support for HTML5. Um, fortunately, there are um, some fairly easy workarounds. And so in this screencast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first um, show an example of a very simple HTML5 page. I'm going to run it in an old browser. I'll run it in a newer browser, and you'll see the difference in terms of the way they render. And then I'll fix the differences with some tools and some tactics that you can use in JavaScript and CSS. Um, you don't have to know how to code to take advantage of these. These are very simple libraries. You can basically link them into your pages and they just work. Um, so even if you have a very basic understanding of HTML, um, these should be um, tools that you should be able to use in a very straightforward way. You'll see in a moment that I'm going to jump into Windows um, so that I can use an older browser, which is going to be Internet Explorer 6. This is a 10-year-old browser, but some, some people are still using Internet Explorer version 6 today for various reasons. Microsoft has not supported IE6 for quite some time, but co corporate users in some contexts still use IE6 for various unfortunate reasons. Um, so there are still IE6 browsers out there, um, and you have the ability to make them aware of HTML5 using a few tricks that I'll show you in the screencast. Okay, so what you see here is an HTML5 page. And I'm going to step through this one part at a time so that you recognize all the pieces and you see what I'm trying to do here. Um, and then I'll load the page in Firefox so that you can see what it's supposed to look like and then I'll show you what it looks like in IE6, then we'll fix the problems. So first of all, uh, document type HTML, very straightforward, this means HTML5. HTML element, head element, title element, same as in any um, HTML page. Then we have some CSS in here. Um, inside of this style element. We don't say type text CSS anymore because this is HTML5 and we don't have to. Very straightforward CSS. We get rid of uh, document margins and padding. And then we have styles that pertain to the header and the footer, which are HTML5 elements. And you can see that in the body of my document down here, I have header and footer. So all I'm doing is putting a header on the page and a footer on the page. There's no content yet. I'll copy and paste some bogus content in here in a second so you can see what that looks like but I wanted to highlight one particular thing so I just um, put in header and footer in here now you can see that my hope is that in the CSS I have um, zeroed out the margins and padding like I mentioned but I also have some color uh, change the font color change the font size and the header like you would in any page you know any any type of site um, and then I've put a border um, around the footer um, and hopefully um, that will work let's go ahead and um, I'll start Firefox so we can see um, what this page is really supposed to look like and I'll, I'm just going to drag the page in here um, so you can see what it should look like. Minimize all this other junk here. Um, okay, so here's what I would expect the page to look like. Um, the current version of Firefox understands HTML5 and so you can assign styles to HTML5 elements like the header and the footer element you can see down here. The red background, let me rearrange my windows here so you can see what's going on. The red background in the header is there, the white font is there, um, the border around the footer is there. Again, there's no content on this page, but um, you can kind of get the general idea. So this page renders correctly um, in Firefox. Now let's see what it looks like um, in Internet Explorer 6 open the page up again um, and I will launch it in IE. I guess that's the default on this installation. This is a brand new installation of Windows XP by the way. I just installed it on a virtual machine today. So there's nothing special about IE. This is exactly, this is Service Pack 3, so it's a later release of IE. It's technically not the 2001 release of um, Internet Explorer, but as you can see um, if I go to help about, this is IE 6, right, version 6. Um, don't run version 6 of IE if you can help it. Um, okay, so you can see the difference. It's not looking good. Um, there's two main problems going on here, both of which we'll fix. Um, problem number one, no styles, right? Um, no red background, and I'll put this side by side with the... Um, you can 
and see the Firefox version of this. And you can see that in Firefox we have gorgeous red backgrounds, white text. We don't get any of that in IE6. Um, but there's another problem that's a little bit more subtle. Can you see that the header element and the footer element are displayed side by side? The reason is that in IE, if the browser runs across an element that it doesn't understand, it will try its best to render it, but it will by default render it as an inline element. It won't render it as a block element. As you know, the semantic elements that exist in IE5, um, the majority of those are block elements by default. But again, um, IE6 doesn't know about HTML5, so it doesn't know to make them block elements by default. Um, that should be very easy to fix though, right? We can just assign manually, right? Um, since the browser doesn't understand um, that these should be block elements, why can't we just go like this? and assign the display block. If you recall from the reading, um, display block will force a inline element to render as a block element, and that gives you all of the properties of a block element. Um, it basically turns you know, a span into a div, and you can make links look like blocks and things like that. So very handy to be able to know, and it comes up quite a bit in HTML and CSS. Let's go back to Internet Explorer um, and see what happens when I tell it to make the header and footer elements block elements. I'll refresh and nothing changes, which is actually what I expected. The reason why nothing changes is that there's another problem. In addition to not rendering um, elements like header and footer that it doesn't explicitly know about as block elements, in fact, it won't even let you apply CSS. Internet Explorer won't even let you apply CSS to um, element names that it doesn't know about. So what we need to do is we need to do a little bit of voodoo witchcraft um, to get Internet Explorer to understand the new elements. And fortunately, um, there, this has been taken care of for you in the form of a library. And the name of this library is HTML5 shim. And the idea behind this is, here's the HTML5 shim homepage. Um, this lives on Google code, by the way, and that's free uh, little piece of JavaScript. Basically, the idea is um, to provide in JavaScript code the ability for older browsers, mainly IE, to be able to recognize the new HTML5 elements so that you can style them. So the problem that I just illustrated doesn't happen. So what I've done um, to be able to utilize this is I actually downloaded a copy of the HTML5 um, JavaScript shim. And what you should do is um, utilize what's called a conditional script tag. And I'll show you how this works. I'm not going to type this in, but I'm going to just copy and paste it into my page. And then I'll explain what's going on with this here. Now the conditional script tag is specifically um, done for Internet Explorer and the idea is to give web developers the ability to fall back on different versions of script depending on what version of Internet Explorer is present. And so you can see the syntax here. This is actually implemented as a um, HTML comment, right? So you open an HTML5 comment and then you use a square bracket and you say if LT IE9, which means if the version of the browser is less than Internet Explorer version 9, then here's the script you want to include, and then you um, close this off with an end if. Um, I would never type this by hand, by the way. I would always copy and paste this because the syntax here is just a little, it's, you, you end up using it so infrequently that I would just recommend copying and pasting it so you don't make any mistakes. But uh, what this HTML5.js does is that this is a little bit of JavaScript code and it will basically uh, go into the document as the browser is render rendering it and ensure that if there are supposed to be styles that are associated with um, the new things, the HTML5 um, elements um, that the browser would not ordinarily recognize, that the browser will pick them up. Okay, So let's save this again. We'll go back to IE5, refresh the page, and you should be able to now see that um, the problems have all been solved. The rendering of this page is essentially identical to the rendering of the page um, that you had in 
Firefox. And one more thing I'll do just to close this out is that this display block is important in IE6 and if you don't include display block, um, actually I'll have to take both of these out for it to work, but um, you have to remember that if you don't have this display block, this is what it ends up looking like. Um, the shim is there so you can style the elements, but the elements don't have the necessary defaults with respect to inline display or block display. You expect in HTML5 for the header and the footer to be displayed um, as blocks, but HT, or I, Internet Explorer 6 doesn't know that. So for IE6 purposes, you say display block in the header and display block in the footer. And I'll refresh that, and it works. Now I'll throw a little bit of content in there. I just put a little lorem ipsum content in there just as a placeholder here, so you can start to see this sort of um, coming together as a real page. Um, refresh it one more time in Internet Explorer, and it's almost like it's turning into a real web page once you add some content and some other stuff to it.